Okay, so today we are going to Liss, which is a village on the border of West Sussex and Hampshire. And I'm going there because there's a job lot of computer components that uh, the guy's selling for £200. And I'm hoping there's some gems in there. He said there's a lot of 775 processors, 1155 processors, some motherboards, and some cases, some AIO water coolers, fans, lots of stuff, memory, hard drives, all sorts. So it should be quite a treasure trove, and I'm hoping to build lots of PCs from it. So, and my mum from Granite Edward are looking after the kids because Queen K yeah. is uh, going to get a haircut. Down the hairdressers. And look at that awful British weather. Oh! Okay, so I managed to buy all the stuff. There was an awful lot of stuff there. Lovely guy there called Jamie. Um, and sorry, the, the lens was getting in the way, the lens cover. Right, so yeah, a lovely guy that was there, Jamie, and I managed to get all the stuff for 150 quid. 150 GBP, which is cool. So I'm gonna get home and have a look at it. There's all sorts of stuff there. There's even a Z97 motherboard with a bent pins on the CPU socket, but I have had success in the past at bending those pins back. So I'm hopeful I'll be able to do the same here. It will take some time to do it, but I have my ways of doing it, which I'll try and catch on camera for you and you'll be able to see as well. Now, the car is pretty full. I've got whacking great cases in the back there. Hopefully lay the stuff out so you can see my bountiful treasure hoard for 150 pounds from Gumtree. Okay, so we got back home and I unpacked the car and as you can see from the following footage there's quite a hoard that I managed to pick up. What a buy, 150 quid for a mountain of tech. And I'm very, very impressed at how much I got for 150 pounds. There's an awful lot here to actually go through. So I uh, spent a few hours actually creating an inventory for all of it. And there ended up being 89 separate items. So for the processors, we had Three Celerons, one G1620 and two G530s, they're both socket 1155 chips. 
we had a G645 uh, Pentium as well, another 1155. We had a Xeon E5606, and that's a 1366 socket that were on the X58 chipset. Uh, an i3 2100, another 1155 processor. A Core 2 Duo E8600, a 775, a Core 2 Duo E7300, another 775, an i3 530, an 1156 chip, and a Pentium G6 950, another 1156 chip. So, nothing spectacular there out of the processors, but still, good. Something to play with, something to test on, something to overclock, hopefully, and see what we can do with those chips, and see what type of performance we can get from those chips in some following builds. So there was quite a bit of memory there, but nothing fantastic and no real high capacity memory either. There was 13 sticks of DDR2 RAM, all ranging in different speeds. The highest being 1066. And there was six sticks of DDR3 RAM, again at different speeds, the highest being 1600. There were two DDR2 SODIMs there as well, and one stick of DDR4 2133 4 gig. In the hoard, overall, there were three motherboards. There was a, a generic Intel socket 775 board hidden in one of the cases. There was the Asus Z97 Sabertooth Mark I board. Now, there is a problem with that board that I did mention earlier, and that is that there's some bent pins in the CPU socket. But I've had a good look, and I think I can fix it. So I'm gonna do a video on fixing that and testing that. And there was also the Asus Maximus 6 Hero board, and apparently that doesn't start off cold. But if you leave the, the uh, power going through it for several minutes, it will then start. So something's wrong with that board, I'm going to have a good look at that one as well. But it'd be great if I can get them both working fully functional, because that's, that's the money out of the job lot there, isn't it? Okay, there was quite a few brand new case fans in there too, which was very good. There were four Corsair ML 140s, two ML 120 Pros with red LEDs, and one AF 140 Quiet Edition. There were three network interface cards, one pretty awesome HP 2 port 10 DVE card, another really awesome four port gigabit network card, so it's got four RJ45 connections on it, which is cool too and one old PCI killer network card, and in, back in the day they were really good for gaming. They probably still are. Okay, on the graphics card front there was nothing very impressive at all, but stuff that still might be interesting to benchmark, or stuff that I'll use for testing other bits and pieces out on. And there was a Palette GeForce 210 1GB, a GT 220 512MB, and a Gigabyte GTX 550 Ti 1GB, and a BFG GTS 250 one So nothing spectacular there. Again, there was nothing spectacular with the hard drives or the uh, SSDs. Well, there was two SSDs there, but nothing spectacular. They were both Intel SSDs and one was um, 80 gig and the other was 40 gig. Both SATA 2. However, there were various SATA 3 conventional hard drives, which was quite cool. However, the biggest capacity was 500 gig, but there were three of the 500 gigs, so that's not so bad, not so bad. And then there was one 160 gigabyte, one 250 gigabyte, and one 320 gig. And there was also an IDE 160 gigabyte. Quite interestingly, there were two other add-in controller cards, storage controllers. One was an Adaptec SAS to SATA 8-port SCSI controller which is awesome, which means I could put eight SATA devices off that card and run it in some sort of crazy RAID 0 stripe across eight drives. And there was also something I'd never seen in the flesh before, and that was a Gen 3 PCIe add-in card for an M.2 drive. That actually gave you the interface. So you plug the card into the PCIe Gen 3 slot, and you get the M.2 interface for a board that hasn't got the interface. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to try that out. There were three IDE DVD writers, I don't think I'll be using those. Okay, there was a bunch of coolers, absolutely loads of coolers. In fact, you could probably call down the country that Queen K comes from with all these coolers. And if you don't know who Queen K is, that's, uh, that's my partner. There was an NZXT Kraken G10 mounting kit. Not exactly a cooler, but I'd put it under this section anyway. And there was a Socket 478 liquid cooler, which will probably go in the Hall of Antiquities. Um, two Corsair 120mm liquid AIO, so liquid coolers, all in ones. Uh, five stock Intel coolers, a ca an Akasa air cooler, a Zalman air cooler, and a brand new Arctic Freezer 7 Pro air cooler. 
plus various other heat sinks and bits and pieces, including a Molex LED strip. There was also, in the job lot, a working HP ProLiant micro server with Microsoft 2011 Home Server pre-installed. Cases, now this section is pretty cool. There were some pretty cool cases here. There was an old school Trendsonic horizontal desktop case. That's where the uh, 775 motherboard was found. A Bit Phoenix Prodigy M Micro ATX or Mini ITX case. A Thermal Take Core V21 Micro ATX case. A Corsair Carbide 200R, which I almost forgot to uh, include in the inventory because the box was hidden behind my table. I, I set up everything and completely forgot about that. So I'd done the entire inventory and then had a nice surprise at the end that there was another case and the Carbide case was still in its original box and I think it would only been used for like a month or so. It was still used, but pretty immaculate. Pretty cool. And the cream of the crop was the Corsair Obsidian 900D case. This thing is a monster. You could fit the seven dwarves inside that case. So yeah, lots of cool stuff for the money, 150 pounds. I couldn't believe my luck. So I explained to the guy, Jamie, who I bought the stuff off, why I wanted it. And he was, he was an amicable guy, a nice guy. And he let me take it all for 150 pounds, which was cool, which was cool. I mean, none of it's outstanding. But that's it, I mean, you've got to keep hunting. I, mean, I found this advert on Gumtree, and I've been looking on Gumtree for quite some time for something like this to come up. Now, you get the odd one or two deals here and there, but then this one came up, and I, and I looked at the pictures and thought, ah, oh, there's a couple of gems in there. There's a few good cases. There's a few things that if I can fix, like the two motherboards, and I can put them in those cases, then we've got potentially some really quite high-end gaming stuff that we can do with that on those chipsets, which is awesome, which I'm looking forward to. So that's it, so I'm gonna use all these parts. I'm obviously gonna to have to buy a few more bits and pieces. I need power supplies, I need more processors, and most important, I need graphics cards. I haven't really decided what to do, though, whether to get secondhand or buy new. I'm quite interested in um, the new 1050 Ti, or maybe one of the top-end AMD cars, like a 480, potentially, I don't know, hmm. So I haven't quite decided what to do with the graphics cards, but I'm looking forward to doing it. I might have a, well, I'll keep, I'll keep scouring anyway. I'll keep scouring Gumtree and I'll keep scouring eBay and I'll keep looking at the deals as well. Black Friday's coming up too, so I might really get something cool then. And I'm going to put together as many builds as I possibly can using all this stuff and future stuff. So please look forward to lots of cool builds. I'm going to try and sort out the camera setup a bit better than my last build so you can see more of what I'm doing. Forty Towers leading to GT Steve. I'd like to say two thank yous, one to Jamie for giving me such a good deal on all that stuff, thank you very much, and another to Brian at Tech City for giving me the inspiration to go on Gumtree in the first place to start sourcing bits and pieces for my own builds and my own videos. If you don't know, Brian from Tech City is another YouTube channel and he does lots of um, old part builds and he mixes new and old parts and even does some new builds as well, but he's really, really good. You remind me of how I started about 20 years ago now, and that's exactly the type of thing I was doing. Maybe not so much hacking up graphics cards with a hacksaw, but similar, similar. Anyway, Brian at Tech City is absolutely awesome. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, go and subscribe to his channel because you'll we've got some good videos. I must have watched his playlist on, on builds several times now. So thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more videos from me on Bomb Tech, then please subscribe. And I'll see you all a little bit later on. A super tower case. You could fit a family of pygmies inside that case. Yeah, I can add nothing to this. You can give me a map if you're looking.